Is the Galaxy S23 Ultra the best phone in the world right now? Well, I've been using this phone for a little bit over two months now, and call me crazy, I'm inclined to say yes, it very well could be. Now, before some of you come at me in the comments, that last statement shouldn't sound too crazy, considering that Samsung is always first in line to come up with its newest phone compared to the competition. So in a way, the Galaxy S23 Ultra really should represent the latest and greatest for 2023. Now, we'll see what the other big players bring to the market later in the fall, but based on my semi-long-term experience with this phone, dude, the bar is set pretty high. The Galaxy Galaxy S23 Ultra to me has been a pleasant surprise of a device that has delivered one of the best smartphone experiences I've had over the past few years. And I put it that way because truth be told, when Samsung first rolled out the phone, I was pretty underwhelmed to say the least. Off the rip, it looked like a super minor iterative update that I thought would be full of gimmicks and stuff people would never use, but it's significantly more of an upgrade than what it seems and in the most meaningful way. So today I wanna go over the specific things that the S23 Ultra has impressed me with over the past two months, ultimately to help you decide if it's the right device for you. And let's jump right into the main feature about the S23 Ultra that has no doubt impressed me the most, it's updated camera system. Samsung continues to hold nothing back when it comes to the camera hardware as the S23 Ultra has an impressive five cameras total. Starting on the back, it has an insane 200 megapixel primary wide angle sensor, which no matter how many times I say it still sounds ridiculous. It's accompanied by a 12 megapixel ultra wide as well as dual optical zoom cameras, both clocking in at 10 megapixels, one at your standard three times focal length and the other a whopping 10 times zoom. So right off the bat, the S23 Ultra is probably the most versatile camera suite on any phone when it comes to range. You can get four completely different images within a few seconds and you won't have to move at all. And I gotta say, I've been really surprised at how much I use and enjoy the 10 times optical zoom. It sounds like an odd focal length to have, but it comes in handy when I'm trying to get a shot of something that's far away. And if it's really far away, I could always use Samsung Space Zoom that actually gives a pretty usable image at 100x, despite the ludicrous digital punch in. And what I noticed for the S23 Ultra cameras, the quality between these different lenses have gotten much better in terms of consistency as the colors, level of sharpness, and overall image quality here are way more similar than what it was in the past. And this is great because you're actually more inclined to use all these cameras rather than sticking with the one primary lens that most people do. And speaking of still image quality generally, these are in my opinion the best pictures coming out of any Samsung device period, and the quality here definitely puts the S23 Ultra in contention for best overall cameras this year. Yes, Yes, a lot of that has to do with the over-the-top hardware that's on this device, but kudos to Samsung for stepping it up with their digital processing. It's quite a step up from last year. The colors are rich and saturated with an extra dash of contrast for some added pop, and the dynamic range that the S23 Ultra is able to pull off is pretty incredible. It's able to leverage its computational strength to give you evenly exposed images that would be virtually impossible using a normal camera, and it's able to do so in a way where the pictures don't look overly processed or artificial. And while on the topic of still image photography, one of the things that I I've noticed that the S23 performs really well with is its selfie camera, it's pretty great. The bokeh in the background looks a lot more natural than before and there's just enough processing going on here that makes the selfies come up flattering but not completely face tuned out. And I think the only issue with the S23 Ultra when talking cameras is the shutter lag which Samsung has been struggling with for years now. It's not the biggest deal when taking more controlled photos but it can make shooting high speed action shots quite frustrating. But I wouldn't consider this issue a major disruption to what otherwise really is a fantastic user experience. And that sentiment extends into the video quality as well, Samsung made some noticeable improvements in this area after what felt like years of neglect. When talking about the ludicrous 8K video that this phone could shoot, it's a lot more usable now mainly because it's not as heavily cropped in and the footage looks fantastic. As to be expected, it's razor sharp and detailed and not as overly processed. It performs the best when you have a primary subject in the frame as you get some nice bokeh with the subject separation and the autofocus has gotten noticeably better and it's easier to use than before. The 4K video is also much improved, not nearly as noisy and digitally overprocessed, and though it's not as good as what the iPhone could do, this is probably the best video coming out of any Android phone at this moment. And this is important as we're living in a time where video quality is just as, if not more important than still image quality. The S23 Ultra is a great choice for content creators looking to get top-end mobile video quality, especially for those who are in the Android ecosystem. All in all, even though the S23 Ultra's cameras look identical to last year's model, Samsung put in a lot of horsepower under the hood of this phone, and without question, this device can shoot some of the best photos and videos in the game today. But let's get into the second reason why the S23 Ultra really could be one of the best phones in the world right now. It's gonna come off really basic, but hear me out. It's just a really well-performing, reliable device. Now, as vanilla as that sounds, I'm a firm believer that phones that nail the fundamentals right far out trump those laden with gimmicks and fad features, which honestly, the S23 Ultra isn't absent of. But to me, what makes this phone so special is the fact that it does the core things that you want it to do really freaking well. 
For starters, the display overall is probably the most enjoyable panel I've experienced on any phone up to this point. It's got a massive 6.8 inch display that is as all screen as you can get. It's incredibly immersive for consuming multimedia. It's an AMOLED panel with a quad HD plus resolution. So not only is watching videos or playing games an absolute joy, the quality here is industry best to say the least. But to me, what really makes the screen on the S23 Ultra super engaging is how well Samsung implemented the high refresh rate. It can clock up to 120 hertz and it's the most consistent and well-performing high refresh rate display on any Android device in my opinion. It's silky smooth and it makes navigating around the UI a luxurious experience. And unlike other devices, I almost never run into any throttling or hiccups even when I push this phone pretty hard. So basically everything I do on this phone on a day-to-day -day basis, ranging from reading the news, checking emails, watching videos on YouTube or TikTok, or playing the occasional game, all of those things can be enjoyed at the highest level that a phone can accommodate. The S23 Ultra to me really is the ultimate power user's device. And what really seals in that last statement to me is one of the S23 Ultra's greatest strengths. And again, it's gonna sound super basic, but the battery life on this phone is exemplary. It's rocking a pretty beefy 5,000 milliamp hour battery that's actually the same capacity as last year, but Samsung must have worked on their optimization and efficiency because the S23 Ultra performs noticeably better than previous iterations. In my experience, over the past couple months, I've been getting around eight to eight and a half hours of screen on time, which is pretty outstanding. Mind you, that's at full resolution and with the high refresh rate blasting, I'm using the S23 Ultra at size settings. What's even more crazy is that if I'm only moderately using the phone to check email or the occasional social media scroll during short breaks, this phone on a full charge can go nearly two days without needing to re-up. The standby time is fantastic on the S23 Ultra as it barely sips any energy when asleep. And I'm astonished at how much battery life I have left on the phone after leaving it at my desk overnight. And considering how much our phones are now weaved into our day-to-day -day lives, battery life is one of the most important features to carefully consider. I can't tell you how refreshing it is not having to deal with charge anxiety throughout the day, especially if you're a heavier user like myself. And Samsung was really smart to focus on this area of the phone's performance that may not be the flashiest, but truly does make an important and impactful change to the overall user experience. So yeah, the S23 Ultra is pretty awesome and I think it legitimately makes a case for being the best phone available in the world today, but let's not forget the elephant in the room. The base model of this phone costs a whopping $1,200. That makes it one of the most expensive phones out there today and unfortunately out of reach for a good amount of consumers. Now, does the high price tag take away from all the solid attributes associated with the S23 Ultra? Well, that depends on how you see it. If you're a value shopper, the S23 Ultra Ultra probably isn't the best choice for you as you could go with other options that are cheaper that are also pretty good. The Pixel 7 Pro comes to mind, which honestly is a great choice for the value shopper. But on the other hand, if you compare the S23 Ultra with other high-end expensive phones like the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I think it clearly stands out as the better choice. Samsung really held nothing back with this phone as there's so much more that you can do with it than what I covered. And what it very much got right this time around was investing in its fundamentals rather than overdoing it with the knickknacks. But hey, that's just me and I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the Galaxy S23 Ultra? Do you think it deserves to be in contention for best phone in the world right now? Or do you think I'm totally out of my depth? Curious to get your thoughts. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you're wanting more information on the S23 Ultra, check out my comparison reviews here with the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Pixel 7 Pro. They're gonna help you be as informed as possible.